All right, I painted some miniatures up for Frostgrave, and you can use these for other fantasy uh, games if you want to. They're a little different. They're kind of a... I did an unboxing of them. They're uh, Dark Sword and, like, Critter Kingdoms, Anamorphic Animals or something like that. But So they're kind of humanoid animals. And so I kind of want to do an update of the painting I've done. So I've got a whole tray here to look at. So we're going to look at them kind of each individually and talk a little bit about what I was trying to accomplish here. So the first one is my wizard. And it's right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over because I tried to do a great owl and you can see a picture of a great owl right there. I tried to copy uh, the face of that owl. And we're going to go in for a little closer look here. And I try to do, I did the feathers a little differently. It's actually lighter underneath and dry brushed with a darker color. Normally you go dark to a light. And this one I kind of did a little different because it looked like the owl's feathers were dark with some white highlights. So I kind of went a little opposite there and I was kind of happy with that. And then I was still trying to learn how to paint clothing. So this one's kind of a, one of my first attempts at doing it. And you'll see later I did some others where I did more of a wet blend. So this is my wizard. Next, um, we got my apprentice. And this one, when I saw this, all I could think about was the Mickey Mouse apprentice. So the, you can see the picture here. I tried to copy the clothing of Mickey Mouse with the blue hat and the red uh, cloak or whatever you want to call it and he's got brown shoes and so there we go and you can actually see we're gonna move a little closer you can actually see the little blue for um, kind of a dark gray black for the pants that matches Mickey and there we go and I'll talk about how I got this effect on the light in just a minute because that was I've kind of figured out how to do it and I experimented with it and it worked the first time I did it. And then you can see he's looking at his book here and I put a little picture in there. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe I can move it up where it'll focus in on it. There's like three or four different colors there on this picture and it kind of a picture over here that he's looking at. So that's my Mickey apprentice, I guess you could say. Now how I did this was um, I painted it yellow like you would normally do and then I was like well how do you get that red in there do you dry brush it up what do you do and then I remembered I did this and got that kind of reddish look around this yellow here and what how I got that was I just used yellow ink so you kind of I did it I did it like upside down put the yellow ink around this bottom edge here and kind of blew on it to let it dry and then it was not completely dry but where it wouldn't run down and then I turned over and let it dry and then I did the same thing for the bottom part and when it dries that yellow ink when it dries when it's thick it kind of does this reddish orange so that's how I did that so that is my apprentice this next one is a cat and I tried originally to try to do like a domestic cat and I couldn't quite get it to work. So then I was looking at how the fur around here went and so I'm going to move this over. So I thought of a lion. So I decided to kind of go a lion route with this one instead of a domestic cat. Except for the tail it isn't a lion. But I think the face was close enough to the lion that I was happy with that. So I kind of went with a lion look. The cloak back here, I tried to get to look kind of like a wolf. How it goes from dark to light. And I was trying to learn how to do some blending with that. And um, I did another one kind of similar where I was trying to learn how to do a wet blending. So um, I forgot what it's called, retardant or something you could put in the ink. I didn't have it at the time for this one. So this 
I'm pretty happy with the cloak otherwise. I mean, for my really my first attempt at trying, I'm pretty happy with it. So this is my lion cat. I guess lion. Next we got a frog. He's a frog executioner. And this one was learning kind of dark to light and light to dark. So it's through the middle here. It's lighter, but then it goes darker to the outside. So that's kind of what I was learning there with that blending technique. Um, also learning the clothing. I think I got a little better with this clothing, learning how to do it. Each one of these was a uh, work in progress as far as trying to learn how to do like clothing. And so rope was easy. Um, that was just uh, put down your base color and just ink it with sepia. And it came out like that. So I'm pretty happy with uh, that one. So that's my frog. Then we've got a mouse soldier. Again, trying to learn how to do the clothing. Um, the problem I had was I kind of did this, that color, because I liked it versus the blue, which actually I think I blue the chainmail. So the chainmail kind of got some blue ink on it also. It's like, well, that's a nice color, color combination. But then when I did the tail, I was like, wow, they just kind of blended into each other. So I went back in and sepia this up to darken it a little bit more compared to the tail. Still a little close, but I'm a lot more happy with that. And trying to get the muzzle where it's a different color than the fur over here. And I did a different color for this part of the sword compared to that. So you can kind of see this kind of a brass compared to the silver color here. And the helmet, I kind of did uh, some brass up here. And along the top, I dry brushed some brass. So that is my mouse. Now we got a red pan. Gosh, this stuff's falling off. I haven't... I haven't matte coated this, it's been so humid. I haven't matte coated any of these, so some of this stuff is going to fall off. Then what didn't get attached to the uh, glue. So this is a red panda. I'll scoot this over here. Here's what a red panda looks like. And when I originally painted this, this came out kind of like a really a red. And I was like, ugh, I'm just not, I mean red. And I just wasn't happy with it. So I went back in and put some yellow ink over it to kind of turn it to more orange, at like uh, the red panda is. It's kind of a reddish orange panda. And again, working on clothing, getting those highlights. So I'm working on brown on this one, trying to learn how to do brown. So darker to a lighter, highlighting the lighter brown on top. So that's what I was learning there. Got a. That's a different color than that, trying to, you got that piece of leather there, so. This one is more just learning how to do some, uh, learning brown and doing clothing and trying to get that face. This is one of the first uh, faces. I was really having problems with this one. Trying to get both sides to be kind of symmetrical where the white wasn't dinky and it was large on this side, so this took a little bit of time. And so that's my red panda. This one is my pug, and I'll put a picture of pug over here. So this one took me a while, but I, probably out of all these minis, I'm really happy with how the face turned out on this one. Turned out on this one. So you can still see how you can see the fur lines and stuff like that. So I was really happy with how this one turned out. Again, it's learning how to do clothing, learning how to do white, which I worked white on another one. Um, originally, I was going to go with an orange here, so it was going to be blue, orange, and white. And um, I didn't have orange color, so I mixed some red and yellow and tried to get orange. And by the time I was done, it just did not look good. So I went over with some red. But man, I was really, really happy with this pug face. And again, trying to learn how to paint clothing. 
So that is my pug. And I think this one's a hamster. Yes, this is a hamster. Uh, so I went to the store, found a new color, magenta. So I decided I'm going to use magenta on this one. He's got his bag of goodies. Did a little highlighting on top of where it's bulging out. Again, trying to learn how to do the clothing. I wasn't quite there with this one. Wasn't quite happy with the clothing on that one. But, you know, it was, it was a learning process. Trying to keep the highlights up here and try to keep it a little dark in there. So, this is my... Uh, one of my thieves I'm going to use in Frostgrave. Then we've got my rabbit archer. Now, when I first painted this up, I, I did the face, of course. I normally do the face first, so I make sure this is what I want. And this way I can just go wild with it and not worry about, oh, I've already painted this, so i got to be careful. I do the face first. And then I did the cloak. And when I did the cloak, or the cape, and you can see I'm getting a little bit better with my... Um, blending and stuff on the clothing, I thought of Batman. So I'm going to scoot this over. So I, here's a picture of Batman, and so I went with the blue, yellow, and gray look for this character to match the Batman. So here we go. So this is my rab -man, rabbit man, something like that. So there you go. Yeah, I'm Actually, I was pretty happy with this one. Went with a kind of a black, and then I was also learning how to do black, and there's another figure coming up where I actually tried to learn how to paint with black. So, there's my Batman rabbit, rabbit, Batman, rab, whatever, this is my, for Batman. Because I, I, when I saw that cape, it just, Batman flashed in my head. So that's my rabbit. Here's the one I was working on, black, which is, um, Let's see, this is a, oh, this is a hamster. I was looking for a tail. This is a hamster. And when I, boy, it's hard to see it on, there we go. So, um, when I first looked at this figure, this is what I thought of. Or Zorro. So then I thought, okay, I'm going to learn how to do black. And it isn't just, okay, throw black on there and you're done. You actually, if you just did black, you wouldn't be able to see all these highlights. The bell wouldn't show up. The, the parts on the scabbard here wouldn't show up. His knee and everything would just all kind of just bleh, blend in together. And so I learned how to do your black and then high, start highlighting up the raised parts. And you kind of can see how I did that with the cape here. So it's dark down here, but lighter up there. I'm kind of turn so maybe you can see. So, again, black's not an easy color. This one actually took me longer than I thought it would do, than I thought it would take because of the black. So, black's a tough color to paint. So, this is my homage to the Princess Bride, I guess. Um, we're almost done here. Um, I got my, what, what, you can have warhounds, which you normally run dogs. Well, I found these, which are my war shrews. So I got four of them. Let me get them all out here. There's only two poses. So here's my war shrews. And take these two away. So this is, let me get this over where you can see it. So this is what a war shrew. It's an elephant war shrew, or elephant war shrew, elephant shrew. This is what an elephant shrew looks like, and I try to get to match the colors. And they're, they're brighter than you think color-wise, so I try to keep the bright colors and going from yellow to orange to red to black. And they have kind of like black or not-so-dark feet. And then the, the fleshy looking tail and ears. And they just have black eyes, so I just black the eyes. And so, and they have armor on. And so these are my not war hounds, but war shrews. And one of these war shrews was awesome. It took out a, the apprentice of another opponent 
another opponent's apprentice and a, I want to say a knight or something. I was just rolling awesome. So one 10-point war shrew took out 300 points on the opponent's side, just some really lucky rolls, but that will never happen again for me. So these are my war shrews. And then the final one is um, my knight. Or he can be a man at arms, and that's my West Highland Terrier, which I'm calling my West Highland Terror. Um, this is, again, trying to work with clothing, so I, I think I got a lot closer on this one. Um, I inked the silver kind of a blue, so it's just not silver, it's kind of got a blue tint to it. Working with white, that's another, black and white are really hard to work with, so this is my white. Um, I'll get to the shield in just a minute. Again, I try to do kind of the wolf. And this one was actually a wet blend. So I actually had the retardant stuff so I could try to do wet blend. And it was, it took me a lot longer to do this one because it was learning the technique and I had to restart and dry it and redo it. So there is my wolf clothing. But I think the transition's better than, let me see if I can find them. Here he is. Than this one. The color transitions. This one you kind of can see the striping more than you can here. The transitions I think are better. So definitely like the wet blend. And once I learn how to do it much better, it's, or quicker, it's going to be a lot better. Um, the, the cloak here, learn this is actually kind of wet blending on this one too to get the dark in the recesses to the lighter on top which maybe you can see a little better there. So you can see how light it is up here on a raised part, but darker down below. Shield, it's actually two, diff actually two different colors of silver I have. I have one that's darker and one that's lighter. I think one's just gun metal, which is the base color, and then I went over it with silver. So I kind of got a two-tone effect there. And it's the same on the back, gun metal, and then on the rivets here, I did silver. So this is my West Highland Terror. So that's all my painting I've done so far. It, it kept me busy for quite a while because it was actually learning how to paint these minis. Like learning how to paint black, learning how to paint white, learning how to wet blend, learning how to do those faces like the pug. How do you blend those colors in but still keep where you can see the fur lines and stuff like that. So yeah, it was a work in progress. I got many, many more to go. Um, I'm pretty happy with this line. And again, these could be used in other fantasy games. Maybe kids would like playing with them too. But I mean, who wouldn't want to play an archer like this? Come on, a Batman archer? Okay, maybe some people wouldn't. But there you go. So that's my painting update. And I've got more to do.